Okay, so I'm gonna go through every exam question that has been asked on SIRDS. If you don't know how to do SIRDS, this is gonna to be too hard. You have to make sure you go and look through my playlist that actually teaches it, because I'm just doing these questions. I'm not actually gonna be explaining how they work in detail, okay? So I'm gonna begin by just the one question which is on expanding and simplifying. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either simplify this first and then do the expansion, or you can expand and then simplify them afterwards. Personally, I always have a preference of simplifying to begin with, and I know that root eight can be simplified uh, to two root two, because that's four, root four times root two, and root 18 can be simplified to three root two, because root 18 is the square root of nine times the square root of two, which is three root two. So root eight is two root two, and root 18 is three root two. So that's root five multiplied by two root two plus three root two, that's five root two. And then I can say that the integer five will stay there and root five times root two is root 10. So I've written it in this form, the value of a is therefore equal to five. If you didn't simplify them first, I will very quickly do this. You get root five, root eight and root 18. You can decide which you prefer. Root five times root eight is root 40 and root five times root 18 is root 90. If you then simplify root 40, you get root four times root 10, which is two root 10, and root 90 is root nine times root 10, which is three root 10, which gives you five root 10. And again, you can see that A is equal to five. So there's two methods for this. This is my alternative method. You decide which one you prefer. But we do get the answer that A is equal to five. Okay, rationalizing the denominator. If you don't know how to do expanding brackets with all of these things, you're gonna find this a little bit trickier. Um, so we've got six minus root eight, and that's over root two minus one. Now you're gonna multiply this by the conjugate of the denominator, which is root two plus one, and that's on both parts here. You should be able to expand these double brackets. I put brackets around them to remind us of that. You should be able to expand them without doing a long method. So I'm gonna multiply everything in the second bracket by six, which will give me six root two plus six. And then I'm gonna multiply it by minus root eight, which will give me minus root 16 minus root eight. Now in the bottom, if you know the shortcut, it's just gonna be these two multiplied minus these two multiplied. But I'll show you the long one this first time. The rest of the time I'm gonna go shortcut. So root two times root two is two root two times one is plus root two. Minus one times root two is minus root two, and minus one times one is minus one. So we didn't need to worry about those because they cancel out, which is why I said you can have the root, these two multiply, minus those two multiply. So the numerator, we've got six root two plus six, the square root of 16 is four, and eight is two root two when you simplify that. The denominator is just left with a two minus one. So I'm gonna deal with the root twos. Six root two take away two root two is four root two, and six minus four is two, and the denominator is two take away one, which is one. So when you divide by one, it just stays the same. So we just have two plus four root two. The only reason I switched the order is because that was the order that they had it written in. So A is two, and B is equal to four. Let's double check we've got this right. Yep, A is two and B is four in this bit, and it doesn't have to be written like that. You could just write it as two plus four root two. Okay, so Martin did this question, rationalize the denominator of 14 over two plus root three. Here's how he answered the question. Martin's answer is wrong, find Martin's mistake. Well, it's gonna come from this, I think, this expansion of this bracket. So he said the two times two is four, the two times minus root three he's got here, the two times root three is here, and he said that root three times minus root three is plus three, but that is a mistake. So his mistake is, he said, that root three multiplied by minus root three is plus root three, it is minus root three instead. And Sean did this question, rationalize the denominator of five over root 12, and she correctly has multiplied the numerator and denominator by root 12, but then here she's changed the square root of 12 to three root two. So actually the square root of 12 is the square root of four times the square root of three, and the square root of four is two. So it should be two root three, but she has said three root two. So Sean's mistake, she said root 12 is three root two. It is actually two root three. Very difficult to spot. It almost rather than just ask you to do the question yourself. So we have got these correct explanations of these things here.
Okay, more rationalizing the denominator. So we want to show that it can be written in this particular form, and this is a three mark question. I'm going to begin by actually simplifying everything in the numerator. That's usually my preference if we can do. So let's just quickly remind ourselves, root 18, that's going to be root 9 times root 2. That's 3 root 2. Okay, that's going to be helpful because when I have root 18 plus root 2 squared, and that's going to be divided by root 8. Now remember, root 8, that's four times root 4 times root 2, that's 2 root 2. That is 2 root 2 minus 2. So the numerator, root 18 is 3 root 2, and I'm adding the square root of 2. And the denominator is 2 root 2 minus 2. Well, 3 root 2 plus root 2, let's actually just put this over here, is going to be 4 root 2. So that's 4 root 2 squared over 2 root 2 minus 2. Well, 4 root 2 squared, that's 4 times 4, which is 16. So we're doing 4 root 2 times 4 root 2. That's going to be a 16, and the root 2s give you a 2. That is 32. So the numerator is 32, and the denominator is 2 root 2 minus 2. So I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying by the conjugate, which is 2 root 2 plus 2. Now I did say I'm going to start doing the shortcut for the denominator. The numerator, however, is just going to be 32 multiplied by these things that we've got here. In fact, I'm tempted to leave it because of the fact it's going to be factorised at the end. So I might actually just leave this as 32 brackets 2 root 2 plus 2. Now the shortcut for the denominator is to multiply these two and then subtract these two being multiplied. So 2 root 2 times 2 root 2 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2 root 2 times 2 root 2 is my working out over here. That's a 2 times 2, which is 4. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, so it's 8. And then I'm going to subtract the 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So we get 32, 2 root 2 plus 2, all divided by 4. Well, 32 divided by 4 is 8, so it's 8 brackets. 2 root 2 plus 2. Now, it does say where a and b are integers. Um, how have I put this? Ah, it wants there to just be a root 2 by itself, which actually means I need to factorise out a 2 from these parts that we've got here. So let me just give myself a little bit of extra space. Because it needs to be a root 2, I'm going to take an extra factor of 2 out, which means the 8 is going to become a 16. And if I put it in the correct order, when I divide this by 2, I'll get 1. And when I divide this by 2, I'll get root 2. So that is 1 plus root 2. So it's 16 brackets, 1 plus root 2. There it is, 16 plus 1 root 2. You can see this is a very difficult topic, and it actually overlaps with A level. So we're going to rationalise the denominator of 22 over root 11 in giving our answer in our simplest form. So to rationalise it, we just multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 11. So the top is 22 root 11, and the bottom is 11, root 11 times root 11, which is 11. Now, 22, when you divide by 11, is just 2, so it just simplifies to 2 root 11 for this one. Okay, we're going to rationalise this denominator. This is the square root of 3 over 2 root 3 minus 1. We're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 2 root 3 plus 1. I like putting brackets in to remind me the method. So for the top part, I'm going to do root 3, expanding it with these parts. 2 root 3 times root 3, that's 2 times 3, which is 6. And then I get plus root 3. Now we're going to do the shortcut for the bottom. We're going to do these two multiplied, subtract those two multiplied. Well, 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. If you want to do some side working, you can do. The 2 times 2 is 4, and the root 3 times root 3 is 3. So it's going to be a 12. And then I'm going to subtract those two multiplied, which is going to be an 11. So I get 6 plus root 3 over 11, so we can see we've got it in this form, a is 6 and b is 11. So we've got the 6 plus root 3 over 11 and the 2 root 11. Okay, another rationalise the denominator. I think it's going to be good to simplify this first, so I'm going to begin by simplifying the square root of 12. The square root of 12 is root 4 root 3, which is 2 root 3. So it becomes 8 plus 2 root 3 over 5 plus root 3. It needs to rationalise the denominator because there's just an integer here. So I'm going to multiply it by the conjugate, which is 5 minus root 3 and 5 minus root 3. So expanding these double brackets, I'm going to begin by multiplying everything here by 8. So I'll get 8 times 5 is 40, 
and minus 8 root 3. Now I'm going to multiply everything by 2 root 3 in this second bracket. So that's going to be a 10 root 3. And then I've got a 2 root 3 times a minus root 3. Well, the 2 root 3s are going to create a 3. So that's going to be minus 2 times 3, which is minus 6. Now on the bottom, we'll do that shortcut. We'll do the 5 times 5 minus the root 3 times root 3. Well, the 5 times 5 is 25. The root 3 times root 3 is going to be 3. So on the top, I've got the 40 take away the 6, and the 40 take away 6 is 34. Minus 8 root 3 plus 10 root 3 is 2 root 3, and the 25 take away 3 is 22. Now, there is some simplifying that could be done here. Everything could be divided by 2, so I get 17 plus root 3 over 11. Now I've got it exactly in that form because it was a root 3 just by itself. So A is 17 and B is 11. And there we go with that final answer. Now, if you're finding these a bit quick, you need to go back to my playlist about thirds because this is me just going through the questions. This is not me trying to teach you how to do this. Okay, we're going to try and express 3 plus root 12 in the form A plus root 3. Pretty easy. This just needs simplifying. And the square root of 12, that's root 4 times root 3. That is 2 root 3. So root 3 plus root 12 is root 3 plus 2 root 3 which is 3 root 3. You can kind of imagine there's a 1 there, right? So the answer is 3 root 3. A is an integer in this case. A is equal to 3, but we don't need to say that. Okay, we're going to express 1 over root 3 to the power of 7 in the form root b over c, where, a, where b and c are integers. So first of all, the numerator is going to be 1 to the power of 7, and the denominator is going to be root 3 to the power of 7. Well, 1 to the power of 7 is 1, we're going to think of what root 3 to the power of 7 means. It's root 3 times root 3. So let's just put a line here to show we're doing this question. Times root 3 times root 3 times root 3 times root 3 times root 3. Well, these two multiply to 3. These two multiply to 3. These two multiply to 3. And then at the end, we've got a little root 3 at the bottom. So it's actually going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times root 3. Well, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so it is 27 root 3. So it's 27 root 3. Now what we want to do is we want to rationalise the denominator, and I'm going to rationalise it by timesing the top and bottom by root 3. So root 3 and root 3. The top becomes root 3, and the bottom becomes 27 times 3. And 27 times 3 is 81. So we've got it written in the form they wanted. B and C are integers. B is 3 and C is 81. So we've got root 3 over 81. Great. And we got for the first part 3 root 3. Okay, final couple of ones that we've got here. You're doing well if you're still sticking with this. We're going to do root 180 minus 2 root 5 over 5 root 5 minus 5. Now I think I want to quickly simplify root 180 first. I think that 9 definitely goes into this. That's going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 20. I might be able to do some further simplification. That's 3 root 20. And I think 20 can be simplified. 20 is 4 times 5. So it's 3 times 2 root 5. It's actually 6 root 5. That's going to help us because the top is going to become square root of 180, which is 6 root 5, minus 2 root 5, all over... 5 root 5 minus 5. So the numerator is 4 root 5, nicely simplified, and the bottom is 5 root 5 minus 5. Well, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 5 root 5 plus 5 on the top and bottom. That is 5 root 5 plus 5 on the top and bottom. So for the top part, we're going to just multiply everything by 4 root 5. So to begin with, 4 root 5 times 5 root 5. The 4 and the 5 gives me 20. And the root 5 times root 5 gives me 5. I'm then going to do the 4 root 5 times 5, which is just 20 root 5. Shortcut on the bottom, I can do these multiplied. Subtract those multiplied. Well, 5 root 5 times 5 root 5. The 5 times 5 gives 25. And so it's a 25, the root 5 gives an extra 5, and I'm going to subtract 25. So the numerator becomes 100 plus 20 root 5, and the denominator, well, it's 125. 5 times 25 is 125, take away 25, so it's just dividing it by 100. 
So I can now divide these things by 100. I can do that divided by 100 and that divided by 100. 100 divided by 100 is 1. And 20 over 100 is going to simplify to 1 over 5. So I get root 5 over 5. That's because 20 over 100 simplifies to 1 over 5. So we've got it written in the correct form of 1 plus root 5 over 5. Okay, the last question that has been asked on SEDS. This one is horrible because it blends it with sequences. And we've got a geometric sequence here. So we've got this sequence. It goes root x minus 1, 1, and root x plus 1. They are the first three terms of the sequence. Find the value of x. You must show all you're working. Well, something you need to know about geometric sequences is that they behave like this. If you have like 6, 12, 24, this is a geometric sequence. And it's a geometric sequence because each time you go across, you're multiplying by the same thing. And what you'll spot with this, if you do that one divided by that one, 12 divided by 6, it's the same as if you did that one divided by that one, 24 divided by 12. They both give you the answer 2, which is what it's multiplying by. So our sequence goes root x minus 1, then it goes 1, and then it goes root x plus 1. So I'm going to use that logic. I'm going to do this one here divided by this one. 1 divided by the square root of x minus 1 must be equal to this one divided by this one. That is root x plus 1 divided by 1. So I am now going to try and solve this equation. I'm going to multiply the 1 up to this side, and I'm going to multiply this up to this side. But I'm going to do it over here so I have some more space. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, and then I'm going to get root x plus 1, root x minus 1. I'll expand the brackets on the right side. So root x times root x is x. I then It's a difference of two squares, so these middle bits are going to cancel. So that I get 1 equals x minus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to the other side, and I get that x is equal to 2. So it wants us to show that the fifth term is 7 plus 5 root 2. OK, so they're going to make us work hard for this. We need to find out what it's multiplying by each time. OK, to do that, I could do this one divided by this one. So how much it's multiplying by? It's called the common ratio. You might not have heard that before. The common ratio is going to be root x plus 1 over 1, which happens to be root 2 plus 1. So to get the fifth term, I'm going to take the third term. The fifth term is going to be the third term, and I'm going to multiply it by root 2 plus 1 twice, because of the fact I want to go to the fourth and then the fifth. So the, th the third term <clears throat> is root 2 plus 1. And I'm going to multiply that by root 2 plus 1 all squared. So I'm going to do a little bit of side working for that. I'm actually going to do my root 2 plus 1, my root 2 plus 1. Let's just quickly work that out down here. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. I get an extra root 2, an extra root 2, and a 1. So it is 3 plus 2 root 2. So that thing is over here. So I'm now going to multiply root 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 2 root 2. So times everything by root 2, I get 3 root 2, and 2 root 2 times 2, sorry, 2 root 2 times root 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. And I'm going to times it all by 1, so that's a 3 plus a 2 root 2. So that is going to simplify so that I have a 7 plus 5 root 2, which is the thing that they wanted it to be. Not very easy at all, but we did come up with two, and it's a shown kind of thing that you've got there, and you can see that process down here. So that is everything on SIRDS. Next thing I'm going to be looking at is standard form. Do make sure that you're subscribed, because there's going to be tons more of these videos coming your way, and lots of support for your learning and for your exams.